Hi everyone and welcome to another episode where we're going to be looking at the pages from the book of Judges. Last time we were looking at the bit with uh, the introduction to Deborah and Barak had summoned his army. Um, now as we go down we're introduced to um, Heber the Kenite and his wife Yael and um, here then um, as we looked at last time uh, they live just outside of um, Kadesh, which is pictured in the background, and we had a reference to that last time. Now, the people themselves, the Kenites, like the uh, Israelites of the time, uh, live in um, uh, tents, essentially, and they, but the Kenites are a distinct group. Um, they are kind of allied with the Israelites, that, but they're essentially um, uh, descended from the Midianites. Um, and you remember there's a connection with the Midianites, um, a positive connection with Moses and then his father-in-law and things like that. So this group seems to be a group which is uh, allied with the Israelites. Heber the Kenite um, here is in the foreground. Um, he's pictured um, in uh, in a Midianite sort of style, um, there's a head, headdress and clothes. He holds in his hand a, a mallet and um, also in the foreground you can see um, he is heating up metal. Um, and this is because the, in the Bible the Kenites are known to be metal workers, copper um, coppersmiths, that sort of thing, and Yale in the background is uh, gathering wood. Um, they are both looking um, and seeing something. Um, then we've got uh, Heber has climbed the tree and uh, looking out. Um, now it says that his tent was but not was pitched not far from the tree. So I've used the tree as part of the narrative to. Um, for him to get a good look and see uh, the army coming. Uh, so he sees this army, um, which is uh, Deborah and Barak and all their 10,000 like men that they've summoned uh, from Naphtali and Zebulun. And so he, he sees them coming and then, we, as we're going to see, he tells sister all about it. Um, in the image you can see the tree itself is obviously quite big. I thought that it would be re it's reasonable if people are using it a tree and calling it the oak um, and using it as a point of reference for navigation in like country it must be a pretty significant tree so um, obviously being large it's an oak and you can see on the far um, right that the the um, what they call the acorns. If I zoom in a bit, um, hopefully we'll get a better look. And um, so you can see the acorns on the tree and the shape of the leaves and things like that. Uh, if I was to um, bring up the um, internet, now let's just get that on there for you. I can show you a picture of the actual um, uh, place. Now that is the wrong slide, but we'll come to that in a moment. This one is the one we're talking about, where uh, the acorn, a, a distinctive type of um, acorn, and um, I've realised I pulled up an image where they're pale, but they're, they're also this dark colour as well. Um, now, uh, moving on to the next bit. Okay, then um, Heber goes to see Sisera, who's the uh, leader of the army of the Canaanites. Um, he, pictured here, is um, training as Heber arrives to speak with them inside the uh, castle, uh, you know. Um, in Hatsor. We see him introduced then and as um, I mentioned before 
believe Sisera is actually an Egyptian um, because at the time in Israel when the uh, in the judges period and uh, and in Joshua's period as well Canaanite itself is actually a, a, a vassal state to Egypt and so it's uh, it's like you know it has all sorts of um, Egyptian rulers or um, slave traps or whatever you want to call them um, but the leader of the military um, then I've pictured as an Egyptian you might say well why um, his name is Sisera and it's Ra being in his name you know the god Ra is um, a, an indication and also um, We'll see in a second that he he goes and draws his chariots from a place um, where you can see. Oh no, let's bring them down here. Um, he brings his chariots together from a place called um, Horusheth of the Gentiles, and um, we'll see it on the map as well. But it seems to be that his army consists of mostly Gentiles, um, so. You know, in a way, Canaanites um, obviously are considered Gentiles, but I think that maybe this is an indication of, of something else. So, anyway, in this um, uh, scenario, uh, this is how he's been depicted. Also, you'll see on his shield, I've got a picture that he has a picture of Ra on his shield. He has a scarab sort of um, ring, and um, and yeah, he has a different sort of skin color and style of armor um, from the day. In the background in this um, image, uh, you can see Heber the Kenite is receiving a payment for his service, like telling them what's happened. <laughs> um, and then they uh, they raise the, the chariots, 900 chariots of iron. Um, this um, uh, statement raises a question because it's like it's chariots of iron and the timeline would suggest that actually it's not the Iron Age yet. So some people have, so there's different ways that people um, resolve this, some anti-Bible people like, oh it says it's the Iron Age, it's not, it's a lie and that sort of thing. Um, there's a couple of ways, well one is that potentially um, the iron is used in the chariots in a sort of small way, uh, like um, to reinforce the chariot or something like that. They did have iron, iron did exist, they just didn't know how to, do very well, how to make um, weapons and stuff like that out of them and armor and, you know, really utilize it. But it still was an element that existed. So potentially the parts of the chariot which were iron, or um, it could be that the expression chariots of iron is like, is is an expression is that is just something that you say um which means you know like we say with an iron fist and if we read in the bible that he he ruled them with an iron fist you say well people didn't have iron fists back then that's you know not right so it could just be that it's an expression from the time from a later time but the transcription or the telling of the story exists in a time where there is the iron age and we believe that um judges was written in David's time, which was the Iron Age, so um, it could be that that the, the the in the time when they wrote it, chariots of iron was um, was an it was a way of expressing uh, you know metal um, barded chariots, and um, they didn't obviously split hairs over which um, metal was used. Um, in theory, though, it would have been bronze, um, and and you'll see in the image. Then we got a few things. There's um, so going sort of left to right. Just make sure I can see everything. Um, the the chap who's holding the spear, uh, running alongside the chariot, um, is uh, Sheridan. Um, they a type of mercenary that work for the Egyptians and uh, form some of their army. By this point, they've been mercenaries in the army for like, um, you know, like a hundred years. So they're just a, diff a different type of troop that the Egyptians employ. Um, they're distinctive by their helmets. Um, they are a branch of sea people. Their sh sh um, shields are round. Their swords are a specific type. 
they're all um, drawn to be um, uh, like I say of a specific type here's what's called chariot runner so somebody who'd run along with the chariots they would uh, train a great deal to be able to kind of you know couldn't keep up with chariots over a long period of time but they were people who support the chariots because chariots generally had um, the more important people fighting in them. But in the middle then we've got the chariot. The one that Cicero is in is an Egyptian style chariot. Um, again it's kind of like an import or whatever um, uh, to reinforce this idea that it's a, it's, a, in, it's essentially a, an Egyptian sort of army in a way that they're fighting. It's like Canaanite king but with an Egyptian um, military. The, in the background are more plain um, Canaanite style chariots, more of a local uh, build. And then on the right, the chariot runner is a Canaanite guy, so he's got a square shield, he's got a big beard, bold head, um, spear, he's wearing Canaanite style clothes with um, uh, zigzag patterns and that sort of thing. His skin is also a different colour, a um, little dark skin, but he's sort of like a, um, you know, a, um, a, a sort of yellower brown and then the Egyptian guys are kind of like a reddy brown um, um, okay then um, now we'll wrap this um, episode here and we'll next time we'll begin talking about the battle uh, between uh, the two now before I go one little last tidbit you might notice that the horse's nostrils are a funny shape and that is because they cut the nostril um, to in this time to be so the horses will be able to breathe in more oxygen and um, not pass out and stuff when they're trying to make them drag these massive chariots of, of um, bronze or iron or whatever around um, so there you go that's the last little bit for you join us next time we'll be looking at the battle between Sisera and Barak <laughs>